Okay, so here you are for part three. You've obviously been intrigued enough to continue the uh, saga of Beck, or as I like to call it, my crazy neighbor. So part three. Now we're on to the next phase, squatters and stalkers. Well, this gets back to what I was saying about that camper, about what I, uh, what I had him take that for, what I gave it to him for. I told him he could have it to uh, he could have it to remove it from the property, scrap it, fix it, whatever he wanted to do with it, as long as it was gone off the property, right? Nothing more. It was just an eyesore over there that I could never get around to fixing. So, oh god, what was it about a week or so ago? I think actually, uh, maybe a little more than that. I'm not sure of the exact time frame. There's actually a police report about it. So, anyway. We uh, start seeing his sister floating around. Now, his sister, she is... You know, she's just out there, man. I don't know what kind of drugs she did in her life. This is a person who walks around. They can't hold a topic for more than three seconds. They cluck like a chicken when they talk. Cluck like a chicken when they talk. And uh, she walks up drinking cooking sherry most of the time because you can't really easily get alcohol here in Kirbyville. There's not many places that sell it. But uh, <laughs> she shows up. She shows up one day. Oh, I'm out there. And she's generally benign. She's just, you know, just, just out there, out there. She needs to get her life in order and, and try to get herself squared away. But she shows up one day and she says, well, I see you have a camper over there. And uh, I was just wondering if I could use it as a place to store some of my stuff. Now, Bonnie Rose, as she's known, is pretty much, as she puts it, a free spirit. Free spirit basically loosely translates to, I'm a homeless bum that squats wherever the hell I can find a place. Well, and, you know, that's all well and good. If that's, if that's the life you choose, that's the life you choose. But I felt kind of bad about it because we were about to start having sub-freezing weather. And, and I, I told her, I said, you can store your things there if... If your brother gives you permission, because that's pretty much his as far as it goes right now, he's supposed to be removing it for scrap. So you can store a couple of things there. And I told her, I expressly told her, I said, I do not want you living in there. That is not safe for human habitation, because that thing's on the verge of collapse. And you go out there and look, he had started pulling tin off of it, you know, way back when, uh, probably about a month or two ago, and then he just stopped. So it's sat out there, and the rod on it has accelerated. It has no door. It has part of a wall gone, you know. And uh, and I told her, I said, I don't want you living in that. That's, that's not safe for human habitation. Don't live in that. Something's going to come in there and bite you, or you're going to go through that floor, and you're going to hurt yourself. I can't have the liability. So she says, all right, well, that's that's okay, that's cool, I just need a place to put my stuff, you know. And um, she goes off, and, and sure enough, on the camera, here's little bits of video, she's putting little bags of stuff in there, you know. There's like, there was like a couple of duffel bags, and maybe some plastic bags, and a couple of articles of clothing. So it looks, for all intents and purposes, like it was being used for storage, that was what it was meant for. And not at any time, and this went on for about a week, stuff coming and going out of there, but not at any time did I ever see a candle or motion or noise or anything. So it just happened that me and Mom were coming from town. We had bought some groceries or some such thing. I can't remember. But we pulled up in the driveway, and she just comes bobbing along out of that house, and she's hi and just walks on over to over to his place and as you know we're getting the stuff out mom is like i think she's living in there 
and I looked at, at what it was. She had all the chairs organized out there like a little patio ring and I wasn't about to go up in there because things were already shitty between me and that, that asshole across the street, that, that crazy thing. And uh, I'm going to start getting more derogatory about him because this was really, this was really taking advantage. I found out later, you know, so we're getting our stuff and she comes back from over there and she goes, she climbs back up in that camper and mom's like, you need to get her out of there. I was like, yeah, I know. But I'm going to call a cop to do it. <laughs> I ain't going to do it myself, man. That little bastard, he's got a little piece of crap 25 automatic, and he's got a, uh, a 243 over there, and he likes to shoot him every once in a while when he gets a little pissed at everybody around him. So, you know, I wasn't prepared for that just yet. So uh, I called the cops. First, though, I went and I, I asked him nicely. I said, you know, we're going to be probably moving by the end of next year so you've got a you know what are you what are your plans with this camper and he goes well right now my sister's in there she's going to be in there for a while and then he goes uh well make sure you take all your crap when you leave and he turns around doesn't even stay to talk walks up in his house and goes up in there he put a squatter in that trailer on my land without my permission so I had the cop come and get her out. And I did that because I wanted that official. Sure enough, the county police that shows up, the policeman shows up, an officer, Logan, he knows her by name. He knows her by name, and he knows him by name. And he acts like it's no big thing. It is a big thing. He acts like it's no big thing. He goes on there, Bonnie Rosebeck, it's Logan. You in there? You need to come out. And then he goes over there, and he uh, confronts uh, Beck, and I have the voice. In fact, I'm going to play that for you, because uh, he said I could record it, and I record everything when I deal with, uh, with Psycho over there. So he goes over there, and he talks to him, and he comes back, and he tells him, that he told him that he had to get his sister out of there, and told the wife that she was, because Bonnie wasn't around, he uh, tells the wife that he that she has to tell, if he doesn't, that she has to tell her to get out. She's not permitted there. He also told them that the agreement on the camper, because of what it was, it wasn't written. It was verbal. There's no written agreement. And uh, that that deal was off. And he is he was not ever to come over here and make contact with us. And we were not to ever go over there and make contact with him. We've upheld our end of it. I don't even talk to him when I see him messing with his mail. There's been a couple of times we've crossed paths because, you know, the mailboxes are right here in front of our house. So when we park the truck, we cross paths, and I don't talk to him. I just go straight in the house. I don't even look at him. Cops said don't even look at him. And it's in the voice recording. I'll play it in just a minute. But he says... But he told me, I didn't even mention the mail thing that you said, but he told me you've been messing with his mail and that you've been filing all kinds of false statements and that you've been calling him up all hours of the night, disguising your voice, pretending to be other people and harassing him. Um, no. And I invite anybody who is in law enforcement to check the phone records. You'll find that I've not called him except for that little business he had a while back want me to invest five thousand dollars to release that two hundred and fifty million dollar worth of uh, coal property he's got up in some place in Colorado which I don't think exists come to think of it that's when the heavy part of all this started was when I refused to invest that and I'm wondering if that has something to do with it he got real desperate he got real desperate for a while but I didn't have the money to give him but that's a different tangent. I may put that in the errata at the end of the video. <clears throat> but anyway, so the cop gets the squatter out and uh, confronts him about it and tells him, you know, you stay over here. Don't bother him. Check your mail. Leave his alone. Don't make contact. You know, it's all this stuff. Basically, neither of us are to have any, any dealings with the other. And I'm fine with that. That's all I ever wanted when I moved here. I didn't exactly want to be where I am right here, 
but this is where I had to settle and I've just wanted to have a private life here and be left alone in all of this from the beginning to now even at this very second that's all I want so things are quiet for about two days things are quiet nothing happens but uh, you know nothing happens for like two days that we know of I actually have to go through a bunch of footage now we're putting up the Christmas tree and you know, we're putting up the Christmas tree and getting everything ready for Christmas and Allison did the ornaments I did the lights and Allison helped me with the assembly of the tree and Allison did the garland and we both kinda cooperated and did the uh, the little hanging ornaments we ran out of ornament hooks and we went to get pizza we said well this is really cool let's go get pizza we'll go get some more ornament hooks things like that you know and she goes up to the door and opens the door and there he is right at the end of the walk way down there in his car watching you know watching us in his car and he drives away this freaks Allison out and it kinda of freaks me out you know and I'm thinking okay this is really weird but I don't really think much of it there's a little thing nagging me in the back of the head so we get in the truck and uh, there's a house that's unoccupied about two doors down toward the tracks you know there's his house then there's the guy with the hound dogs house that howl all night used to I don't know what he did they're quiet now they're noisy during the day but they're quiet at night now and then there's this unoccupied house that somebody is maintaining the grounds on you know the grass is cut and it's well kept we're driving out to go get uh, go get this pizza and there he is up there he had pulled off and angled his car and he was watching us and he watched us drive past and when we got almost to the tracks she could see him out the back of the, of the vehicle he starts driving back toward our place and toward his place turns out he just pulled in his driveway but I don't know what he would have done um, and it was nagging at me but I'm thinking well the cameras may catch everything may catch what he does there are certain blind spots those cameras don't cover but uh, we're going on and it's, it's still nagging at me and at first she asked me do you want to go back to the house and I was like no nah, I think the cameras will do it but then as we got closer to the highway I kinda I was worried about it because God knows what he's gonna vandalize or tear up because he's already got it in for us you know but he's one of those little grab ass types so uh, I said well just take me home and I'll go home and you can pick up the food and the items and I'll watch the house so she took me back to the house I do think that if I had not come back to the house that he would have tried something a very strong let me tell you it's getting to the point now where we're starting to be afraid for life and limb over here and property so she went off to get the food and I started pulling the video footage because I wanted to see what he'd been doing that day that camera records all the time and I caught him two other times where he will drive up right there to that thing and you can see his face and he is looking around at the house his little heads going yeah and then he sits there for maybe 20 30 seconds and then he draw and then he just drives on just slinks away he slinked away behind her truck and he was behind her truck for quite a bit and then he just kept you know he kind of just slowly drove off now according I think according to the Texas anti-stalking law that's drive-by surveillance that's a third-degree felony well about an hour later he you know he's back home he creeps out of his driveway so slow that the motion detection on the camera doesn't pick up the motion of his vehicle so I don't know how quite how long he was there before that little bitty gray car zipped by zipped by on the road and set the camera off but after that little car set the camera off 
you know, he just pops into the frame because the motion detector switched on and started the camera. He sits there a good two, maybe two and a half minutes just in his driveway looking out at us over here. And then he just slowly pulls out and goes toward town. You know, now these I didn't know had happened until I found them in, in the early footage. And then there's the scene, you know, we didn't know how long he had been there before she spotted him until I looked at the footage. And uh, he had done the same thing. He kind of just pulled up. And then he actually, he pulled up to her truck, to the front of her truck. And then he backed up. And then he sat there watching this house. And then when she opened the door, he kind of did like this, eh, eh, drove off and that's that's when the incident of him watching us from down there watching us leave happened and for your viewing pleasure here are the videos here are the videos recorded from that footage these are the segments that the camera picked up and the day was windy and I had to really dig to get these segments out because there was a lot of plant a lot of plant material moving around in the wind but it produced good results so for your viewing pleasure my fellow friends and youtubers i will show you this for your examination and you tell me is this something is this stalking and what do you think about it i told her or whenever he sees bonnie tell her the same thing all right. Um, I told him he either come up here and get it off his property, or you're giving it to somebody else. So there's no agreement or nothing like that. Either do what you're gonna say you're gonna do, or don't. I told him not to come over there, not to contact you, and you don't go over there and contact him. Yeah. Leave I, each other alone. I didn't even bring up the mail thing, but he said that you've been doing his mail. What? And calling him, making false statements on the phone, and what? acting like other people, and. That's bull crap. I actually have a year and a half of video on these mailboxes. And I've never once touched them. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's been advised to stay off your property and leave you alone and get out of that trailer. And Bonnie, she's going to tell Bonnie the same. If I see her between now and then, I'm going to tell her. I feel bad about it because she's actually more benign. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of want to help her out, but not like this. Yeah. Well, I understand. But if you need something, man, give us a call. Okay? All right. Thank you, buddy. Okay, so this first video, this was the very first incident um, where he just pulled up and basically pulled up to the house and was looking around at the house. As you can see here in just a minute, it takes a little while because the motion detection actually kicked off on that white truck, so he gets in on it toward the end of that. <coughs> and here he comes. And he just pulls up and that's where he stops on a good screen you can see him looking over here and watching this house on a little screen you're not gonna see it very well and he just slinks away and he kinda pauses over there by her truck I don't know what the hell he's doing and then he drives off so that was the first one now the second one he crept to the end of this driveway so slow that the motion detection didn't pick him up until a car zipped past and this thing films two seconds in advance for any event so you'll see the car zip past in this next one coming up I believe that's this one yeah so it's about to reach the end of its first 30 seconds and um, then that little car zips past watch him pop into the screen in just one minute doop 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 do, 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 do. You know, the camera's about to shut off, and well, any second. It takes it a little while, but here it comes. Yeah, there he is. And see, there he is. I don't know how long he was there before that happened, but that little vehicle that zipped past, that's what triggered the camera. So he crept up there pretty damn slow, and then he's there for a good two minutes or so if you watch the time indexes the motion detection actually stops and picks up when he begins to drive away you know when his vehicle starts moving so there's time between when it stops and when it starts that accounts for about two minutes and uh, 
there he goes. If you look down toward the uh, bottom left, if you go back, you'll see that the time index jumps, and that's why he sat still long enough for the camera. Now the next one, <clears throat> this is the one where we caught him. This is the one where we caught him. We didn't know he was doing any of this. You know, this is like two days after the cop, two or three days after the cop told him, don't mess with us, stay over there and leave us alone, you know, and told us to leave him alone. And we've been leaving him alone. It'd be on my camera footage if we didn't. But here he comes. And this is about the time we finish. But see, he drives forward. He's looking there, and then he just decides, well, I'm going to back up, and I'm going to just watch. And he sits there. Now, he takes off when she opens the door. And you watch. He still had it in reverse. He had to put it in forward, because it'll lurch backwards, and then it'll go forward. So it's like, yeah. and then he figured it out and he goes on. And that's the point where he goes up to that unoccupied house and sets his car up and he watches us leave. And then he comes back up here. So that's that. That's all of it. And then we, you know, a little bit later, we come out. Allison asks, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I think the cameras will catch it. <coughs> so we go out and we get in the truck. <clears throat> and we head on and we're thinking well that's that's about it you know that, that's about it and it was still nagging at my mind the whole time we were traveling especially after we saw him watching us and she brought me back I don't think that video is here excuse me coffee's doing things to me I don't think that video is here it's just us leaving and uh, that's about it what you see is what you get. Just in closing, there are some other strange things that he's been doing that uh, are really unusual. And there's one here. There's an instant where a FedEx truck passes. Oh, I wish I had had a bunch of that on the footage. But there was a thing he was doing in the early, early stages of recording all this. And unfortunately, I deleted a lot of that because it didn't pertain to us. But then I was told to keep everything afterwards. I wish I had the copyright clearance to play it, but I really need to have the Yakety Sax song because in the early footage, when a FedEx truck would go by, his little van, that jalopy he drives, was always in pursuit of that FedEx truck. It would go this way, and, and there would go his little van chasing it, and it would go back the other way, and there would go his van, you know. And, and he did this probably for the better part of two weeks. And if I could have, if I could have, if I'd had the presence of mind at the time to keep that, because I was just, anything that didn't pertain to us was none of our business. So I was basically just discarding the footage that was, that, that was associated with that. But then the police said to go ahead and just keep everything. If I had enough drive, you know, enough drive space to just keep everything. So I started keeping everything, but in the early days of his flip out, it was like, you know, and it was just like that. You know, it was funny as hell, but he's really paranoid about something. He's screwed up about something. I, I don't know, man. And he is a clucker. He is a clucker. If you talk to him, one of them, if you've ever talk to somebody whose brain is fried from the speed or the meth or whatever the hell it is they do they don't talk like an old person or they talk a million miles an hour you know and they're always just oh look at that squirrel over there you know or uh you know he's like that he's one of them and he has these weird i'll tell you one of the things he did and i didn't let it on i probably said it in the first video he pulled up uh, well, he came over on the property while we were working on that well out there in that well house. And uh, 
this is when I met him, and the first thing he says, you know, is, you know, it's all kinds of strange things. You know, they just, they pointed telescopes to space, and they heard whale song. Whale song. I mean, just told that with a straight face. Okay, whale song. Star Trek, The Voyage Home. I've seen that. What bullshit are you peddling, dude? You know, it, it's probably good that I am well read because I can catch him in a lot of his bullshit, you know. But anyway, uh, that's just one of the things, you know. But that thing with the FedEx thing was just crazy. And the other thing he started doing, and this was after the FedEx incident where he accused me of interfering with his packages. I'll show you this video because I don't know what to make of this. And maybe someone out there can tell me because I'm going to show it to the police and see what they think of it but I'd like some opinions from all of you out there on YouTube let me show you this and you tell me because I really don't know what to make. it looks like he's telling that FedEx guy that my house is his address the way he waves and points that's what it looks like it says I live here do you have anything for me is what it, it says to me but I don't know I don't see that well. My cameras see a little better than me. So, and you may pick up something I don't. So here we go. So, what the hell was that about? Me and Allison actually looked at that little snippet after I pulled it out of the camera. And, uh, we don't know. It almost, to me, it looks like he's basically waving that guy down and telling him this is his house. Now, knowing his history with our mailbox, I'm wondering if he might be trying to skim a package. But, we don't get packages. You know, and we've I tried to tell everybody, don't send anything uh, FedEx, send it all USPS, you know, because it's held at the post office, and they know what's going on. But I don't know what that gesture means. I have no idea. I've never been good with things like that, so I have absolutely no idea what that gesture means that he just did. And even Alice is like, that's creepy. And I had to agree with her. But if you know what that means, if you know what he's doing, or you suspect you know, uh, let me know in the comments, man. But, uh, yeah, this guy's level of harassment and really just fucking around with us is, uh, it's, it's getting kind of weird. So weird, in fact, that we've decided to arm ourselves. And we're up in here armed. And like I said in the earlier video, I walked this property at night because he started moving around at night again. So, uh, you know, and even the cops, you know, well, if you're in fear of life and limb, you're within your rights to shoot him if he's on your land. And I told that cop, I said, I am in fear of life and limb. My wife is in fear of life and limb. And, you know, so that's how that's going to go if it goes that way. I've never had to kill anybody. I've almost had to. They just moved before the bullet could get there. But, uh, and that was those guys messing with the well house, you know. But this one here, I think he's going to push things and push things and push things until we have to do something really drastic with him. I, I don't savor the thought of having to do that. But I don't look at him as a human being at this point. I look at him as an intruding animal. And that's how I'm going to treat him. You know, destructive creature. And he is, you know, he will be where he's not wanted. I know he's eventually going to get bold enough to slip in here and try something. And I hope to God I catch him because that will put an end to all of this. But uh, he better hope he gets arrested by the Postal Service before then because uh, we're waiting for him over here. 
But uh, that'll be in part four. There's some other strange things he's done. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I want to tag something kind of interesting at the end of this. If I can find the footage, if not, it'll be on the fourth video. But this is getting pretty long, so this is the third part. Male tampering and stalking. Actually, with this one, it was uh, squatters and stalkers. And I think that's what he's up to. You know, he's just doing his little grab-ass crap. And it's escalating. So let's go to part four. But before we do, let me see if I can find that footage. If not, it'll be on part four.